All right, welcome to the screencast. Um, this is a quick introductory video for uh, the lab on hearing and equilibrium. I'm assuming uh, most of you have AP1 at RVCC, so you're used to the lab guides and the activities. If you haven't had it here, or if you don't recall, the lab guides are just the PDF files that look like this. They have all the pictures and full descriptions of everything. And then the activities are just an outline of exactly what it is you need to know. Here's your anatomy, here's your histology, um, and then whatever physiological experiments or activities we're doing that week. Um, this file here is a PowerPoint. It is this PowerPoint here. Uh, and what I have done is I have a blank picture, unlabeled picture, on every slide along with just the anatomy from your lab guide that is easily visible in that picture. And then I give you a slide with those things pointed out but not matched up. Um, I will leave it to you to figure out how you want to use this. Um, I would say it would be good to just start here and see if you can use this and this and that and this, right? To figure it all out on your own. Um, the more you struggle, the more you have to toggle back and forth between looking at this and looking at that and then looking at this again. Um, all of that back and forth and thinking and trying to figure stuff out, it's all processing the information. It's a part of studying and you'll retain the information better if you work harder to get it. Um, so I'm going to try not to over explain things because I don't think that helps. Um, let's see what else do we have here. I've explained that. Um, I do have a little disclaimer here about referring to the PowerPoints for functions. Um, I'll try and remember to tell you when is the best time to go to your PowerPoints. There are a few things that I just don't address in the PowerPoints. Um, and these are the lecture PowerPoints, I should say, um, as opposed to the activities. But, you know, the activities have, or not the activities, the lab guides have a full sort of sentence, paragraph, description of things. And if you look at my PowerPoints, I do my best to give very short, brief functions for each piece of anatomy. And I think the one, the way I phrase it, because it's shorter and easier to remember, I like my descriptions better. Um, and it's just what I'm used to seeing as answers on the exam. So it's better for you to write something that I'm more likely to mark right. Although if you write anything from the lab guides, I will give you credit for it. Um, so there's that. And then, so what I wanted to do was just take you through the activity real quick and show you what you need to know, what you don't need to know, um, and maybe point out any times that there are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, I, discrepancies, sorry. Um, so this is your activity. We are doing both of the objectives. So you're identifying everything and you're going to have a pithy, easy to remember, easy to type on an exam function for everything. Yeah. And we are going to go over the function of the different kinds of receptors. So you're going to be identifying histology slides and saying, you know, that's the bacillar membrane, it does this. Um, so it's, it's everything is structure function. You'll see that the quizzes are more heavily weighted towards function, or excuse me, towards structure, because it's easier to get just the straight up identification down first. But by the time the exam rolls around, you need to be able to look at something, identify it, and state its function. So looking here, you've got external ear, middle ear, and inner ear. These, you don't need to worry about identifying or their functions. That's just organizing the material. The terms that you need to know or the anatomy that you need to be able to identify is all lettered. Um, 
and I'll go through functions really quick uh, just to give you an idea of what you want them to be, but you might have to either listen to it a couple times or go to the book to have time to write it down because I'm not going to write everything on the screen for you. Um, so again, external ear, we're not worried about the function. So you've just got pinna, an external auditory canal as part of the external ear. All they are doing is collecting and funneling sound waves towards the middle ear. So the first structure that sound waves hit is the tympanic membrane. And then for function, all you want to do is be able to say that the tympanic membrane transfers or transmits vibrations to the next structure in the ear. Because your ear is basically very mechanical. One thing vibrates another thing until you get to this the end of this long line of parts that vibrate. And then a little bit of physiology takes place at the end. Um, so you have these three bones in your middle ear, which you need to be able to identify. So the tympanic membrane is going to vibrate the malleus. The malleus is going to vibrate the incus. The incus is going to transmit vibrations to the stapes. And then the stapes is going to transmit vibrations to the oval window, um, which is part of the cochlea. Whoops, that's supposed to be cochlea. So you could say stapes transmits vibrations to oval window or transmits vibrations to the cochlea. Uh, the one thing I will point out on the slides is on here. And again, I, I, I'm not going to explain the anatomy except for this one piece here. Um, this is your stapes. It is one of your ossicles. It is a very small bone in your inner ear. It is sitting right up against a flexible membrane. Uh, so this outer part of your inner ear is bony material and you can think of the oval window as like a flexible drum head um, which is right more flexible than the cylinder part of the drum um, so the oval window is right behind the stapes here so you are never going to be identifying the oval window because this is the model that we have for the ear and you can't see the oval window on the model um, so you can say if you identify the stapes that it transmits vibrations to the oval window, but you will never say that's the oval window and it transmits vibrations to the cochlea. And one thing I will point out um, when you're going over functions, right? This is hearing and equilibrium. You have three different parts to your inner ear that each do something different. Uh, these three things are your semicircular canal, they are involved with one form of equilibrium, which you will read about, about. This part here is your vestibule. It's what everything here is attached to, so the middle. Uh, like on this slide, it's here. This is the vestibule. That is for a different sense of equilibrium. And then this part here is your cochlea. So when on an exam, if I ask you about the vestibule, or any of the semicircular canals don't say anything about vibrations they have nothing to do with vibrations the vibrations go from the oval window through into the cochlea they don't pass through the vestibule or the semicircular canals um, just an fyi for that then yeah i will point out uh, a couple of things on the slide. So I'm not going to go back through and talk about the anatomy because I really want you to read about it and figure it out on your own. Um, but you have two slides that you need to be able to identify. Um, the cochlea slide and the criste ampullaris slide. Uh, so this is what the cochlea looks like and It'll probably make more sense if you've listened to the lecture PowerPoints first, because in the lecture PowerPoints, I do give a more detailed explanation of the structure of the cochlea, just so that its function makes more sense. Uh, but if you look here, I like this picture of the cochlea. 
or we can use this one right here. Right. No, I think this view is better. See how it's wide here and then it gets narrower and narrower. So you want to envision this sort of it's a tube within a tube structure that then gets wound up like a cinnamon bun and then when you take a slice through it like this it looks like that so the, there's one two three chambers here one two three chambers there that's the repeated structure that got wrapped around and around and around and around so each one of these this then that then that is one section of the cochlea that you've cut through because it's been wrapped around many times. What we want you to be able to identify is the organ of Corti or the spiral organ. Um, so on the exam you might see a picture that looks like this one or this one here. Um, so all of the structures that are inside this little oval um, is the spiral organ. Um, and that is the thing that you are identifying. So when you see this on the lab exam and there's an arrow here, like where this blue arrow is, and we ask you what structures at the end of the arrow, you say spiral organ or organ of Corti. Um, and then its job is to transduce sound or detect sound. If you've listened to the lecture PowerPoints already or read the lecture PowerPoints, you know that transduction is the fancy anatomy and physiology word for detection. So these are the structures that take vibrations and turn them into neurotransmitter release. The parts in your lab guide are illustrated here, but again, all you need to, all you need to be able to identify is the spiral organ. Um, so this straight part here is the bacillar membrane. This is supposed to be straight, um, but the cochlea always takes some damage when it gets sliced um, because it is a bony structure and you can imagine if you tried to take a very thin section of a bone it would crack and crunch and that's what happens to the cochlea. So this this whole chamber should be a little bit bigger. You've got a bend here and a bend there and a bend there. So imagine if you straightened everything out. This would be a straight line that runs from here to there. And then this tectorial membrane should run flat and connect to the hair cells that are right there. Um, but this is gelatinous, which means it's very watery. And when they process the slides to mount them or the tissue, when they process the tissue to mount it on a slide, they dehydrate it and it shrinks up. Um, there is a rehydration step later, but it doesn't always return to its original form once it gets um, dehydrated like that. Um, so those, those are your parts. Your hair cells are in here, your bacillar membrane, vestibular membrane, and tectorial membrane. That is, or I should say, what's inside the circle, the bacillar membrane, the hair cells, and the tectorial membrane are what make up your spiral organ or the organ of Corti. Um, and that's what turns vibrations into neurotransmitter, which then gets dumped on dendrites here. Uh, then you have your criste ampullaris. That is just this thing right here. Um, so a couple of things to point out now that I'm thinking about it, right? So the cristae, this is the structure that is involved with what we call dynamic equilibrium. This bigger chamber in which it is found is called the ampulla. And the ampulla, this open space here, is continuous with the semicircular canals. So all three of those structures work together to perform the same function, which is dynamic equilibrium. So if we go back to here, right, these are your semicircular canals. This is your ampulla or an ampulla here. Inside of that is your crista ampullaris. Um, so if you see this on the lab exam, you say crista ampullaris function dynamic equilibrium. If I ask you to identify this 
you say semicircular canal, dynamic equilibrium. If I asked you to identify this little bulgy part here, you say ampulla, dynamic equilibrium. So there, all three structures get the same function because they all work together to give your body a sense of dynamic equilibrium, which is how your brain knows whether you're spinning. Um, so it's rotational equilibrium. And then this part here, your vestibule, is for linear forces or static equilibrium. Um, so stop, start, left, right, um, those sorts of um, those sorts of functions. And it also um, picks up when you lean forward or lean back because it's neurologically it's the same sensation as stopping or accelerating. Um, so let's see, we've gone through all of this stuff. So just to remember, I'm going to get crazy here because I can do screen sketch, um, right? Whoops, sorry, I got the wrong pen in my hand now. This is what you are identifying, the organ of Corti. This is its location. This is crap. Um, and then the Christae ampullaris is what you're identifying. And then just remember that it works with your ampulla and your semicircular canals. So those three things are all going to have the same function. Um, and I think that's all that. Uh, then all this you can just skip. Um, I have not found a way to incorporate this into an online class. You don't have tuning forks that I can tell you to play with at home. Um, if I had more time to prep, I maybe could have come up with something um, and had you take a, like a silly cell phone video of you playing with pots and pans and tuning forks. Um, but this information never shows up on the lab exam anyway. So um, just focus on all of this anatomy, know the function of each structure and the two histology slides, organ of Corti in the cochlea, Christae ampullaris in the ampulla. And that is that for hearing.